Okay, so if you clicked on this video, you probably want to know how to survive mid-game, how to get more kills in mid-game, or even just how to get more placement points in mid-game and how to get those rotations off. I got you covered with everything in this video, and we're going to break it down into three parts. Part one is going to be how to successfully win fights. Because it's okay winning fights, but sometimes it can leave you at a loss, whether it be materials, health, ammunition, or even just zone time. Because, you know, zones on your back, then you're forced into another fight, you know, that you don't want to be in. And you know the fight I'm talking about, the one when you're on the edge of the zone, there's a guy in front of you, you want him to rotate, and what does he do? Turns around for some reason and starts beaming you, and it's just like, man, just rotate, we're both going to die now. And there's players like that all the time, man, so you got to, you know, successfully win those fights. Part 2 is to get more kills and end fights faster, so it's really zoning in on that. And then part 3 is to fully avoid fights. So any of my boys here for placement, I do have timestamps, so you can go straight to the end. But it does help me out a shit ton if you do watch the whole way. And plus, it's great for you, man. Me being a Fortnite coach, it's going to be packed with information, man. Trust me on that. And obviously, mid-game for me, like, understanding mid-game is zone 3 and 4. Anything before that is early game. And I will leave a playlist at the end that will help you out a shit ton on early game. And then next week, I'm going to be doing end game. So it is worth subscribing. So let's get straight into this video, man. Let's start off with part 1. Okay, so you made it to part one of the video, and what we're going to be talking about is how to successfully win fights. Very simple, very quick, very clean, just a few bullet points. Some of you boys will know some of this stuff, but hopefully I'm explaining it in a way that it makes it a lot more clear than every other YouTuber band, because that's my job. I'm a coach, I'm trying to give out as much information as possible. So let's start off with, you should start fights from about 20 to 50 meters away, okay? Now that seems very basic, 20 to 50 meters away, that's a nice window to start a fight from. The reason why is that you notice some people, and you've probably had teammates like this, they start fights from too far away, and some like teammates start fights from too close away. That one is more or less done, but people start fights from too far away. You can shoot at a guy from like maybe let's say 60, 70, 80 meters in that range, okay? And you can hit him four, five, six times, even two double dinks, man. It doesn't really do anything. It, it, it means he has to stop where he is and start healing. But in trios and duos, that doesn't mean shit because his teammates are just going to suppress your team. So now you're both stuck very far away. And the only way for you to get closer to them is if they stop shooting you or you just brute force your way, use all your shield, get beamed in the process of going towards them. Especially if they have high ground, man. It's kind of a GG for you. So you shouldn't be starting fights, man, from anything further than 50 meters away. And the reason why you shouldn't start fights too close is because you lose an advantage. And that's my next point I want to talk about. If you start fights at a very close range... You're starting a fight on a 50-50. It's an even playing field. And then depending on what happens next, makes it either you're at an advantage or they're at an advantage. And a great way to actually get an advantage before even pulling out your shotgun is by hitting your AOR shots. And I think that's a whole lost meta in this game. Like, I know you do. I know people hit their AOR shots and stuff like that. But think about it, man. If you hit three AOR shots before you go to a box fight, you could be on 200 health and he could be on 100 health, no matter what AO you're using. If you're hitting 3 shots, maybe around 30 damage, 20, 27, 28, 30 damage, you know, you know what I mean? Like 3 30s, that's 90. 90 damage gone, and you're going into a fight with a pump. It's gone, man. Even a purple pump, a blue pump, even a green pump max headshot can take him out of the game. And it's all about pressure from then. Like, are you able to let him heal? No, you don't want to let him heal because then those 3 shots were pointless. And if you're too far away... Those three shots that you hit don't mean nothing because by the time you get to him, he's fully healed and you, there's no way you can put pressure on him while he's that far away. But let's say you're 30 meters away. You hit three of your shots on him, he has to box up. So 30 meters is, is kind of okay for you to walk and hip fire with your SMG or your AR and just get close to him. So he has to keep holding that wall while you're spraying him and he can't heal. So he's stuck in one place. He can't heal because he's just going to get shot up and die. And like you're at an advantage. You can easily take high ground because he's stuck in that box. There's so many advantages you get from that. So that's what I'm saying. It's three AR shots. If you can hit three AR shots, practice that, man. And your whole aspect on fights is going to change. And it's so simple, man. But a lot of people don't pay attention, man. That's all you should be aiming for. Three AR shots. One, two, three. Abuse 100% accuracy. Call it a day. Now, look. If you have a flame bow or stink bow, abuse it while pushing them. The same method with the SMG. But if you're shooting stink bows, he's got to move out of box. If you're using flame bows, he's got to move out of that box and then he has to swap to hards. What do hards do though? When you're building out of hards, and let's say you shoot him with a stink bow, or no, example, flame bow. You shoot him with a flame bow, he has to move to metal. Okay, he could move to brick, but let's just say he moves to metal. Metal 
Then you pull out your SMG, spray metal because it takes so long to build. The pressure is unbelievable if you're just conscious enough and aware to pull that off in game. And then get really, really good at box fights and peace control because it ends fights so much quicker. And that's going to save you materials. If you're saving materials, it means you don't have to end that fight, go off and start farming. You get me? So the whole game is just more fluent by you sticking to box fights, okay? And look, peace control is very, very popular. It's very, very must need. So I did make a video last week on peace control that I will also like put up on the end screen. So when the video is over, you have something else to watch, man, and it should help you out a shit ton. Most of my boys that are watching this video have probably seen it, but if you're new here, man, that will help you out a shit ton, man. Okay, let's move on to the next part, man. Hopefully this is helping you. Hopefully you've hit the like button, maybe the sub button, but let's go, man. Let's keep going. Okay, so in part two, what we're going to be talking about is how to get more kills and then end fights faster. I touched on it a bit last time, but I'm going to be talking strategies. I'm going to be talking rotation methods, so please listen carefully. You should be playing edge zone because there's more W gears. And there's more W gears on edge, that means more kills for you. So this is obviously talking about kills right now. Again, I told you boys are here for placement that that is at the end. So we're talking strictly about picking up some nasty amount of kills right now. The reason why W gears are on the edge because more than likely they do get caught up in fights on the rotate in because you know if they go and fight somebody they get the kill they go fight another another somebody but that person's a little bit better that means they're stuck fighting them until one wins and let's say they win then they've got to rotate but they're rotating late so then they come in out storm or even they come in and they just box up on the edge that's usually where your w keyers will sit now they are better players because they are w keyers which means they're confident players so regardless of mechanics they're confident so you need to be going in there with a higher level of confidence and hopefully a higher level of mechanical skill. But even if you don't got that man, the confidence will 100% make you win that fight. So again, applying the methods I said earlier of those 3 AOR beams. And obviously if they're boxed up, you might not be able to get those 3 AOR beams off. But what you can do is unless you can sneak up on them and get straight into a close range fight, take it to a box fight, you don't want to go cranking. And it is good though, if you do have to go cranking, you're on edge zone, which is much better for cranking. Um, but it does get very, very worse on the next zone. Going into zone 5, 6, and then your half and halves. Don't be building, don't be cranking. That's a different video. Again, that's next week's video for end game. This is mid game, and last week we did early game. So again, hopefully that is making sense. And you should be rotating through POIs and hotspots, even boxing up there. So an example I want to give is, imagine lazy lake and the big building that always tends to be in about third or fourth zone for me as well just every now and then and that the, that's a hype building you get me so that's a popular building if someone's rotating in they'd be like hey that's high ground let's take it so you want to actually be taking high ground positions because high ground positions are looking like popular positions so it's like hey that's high ground and let's just say the average player is like i like high ground that's and that's you know that's what's meant to happen they just know the basics they don't know why the high ground is important they just like taking it because everybody talks about it so they go and take high ground and you can go up after them you can be there before them but it's just a great way to pick up a free kill because sometimes people do be rotating to those hot drops and the pois and stuff like that rotating through trying to get loot and even if they're shambles man they might go in there for some materials or to box up in a basement especially in those lazy lake basement houses and that are beside each other man i always see people boxing up in there definitely not me that boxes up in there when i'm having a bad tournament or a few bad arena games but look regardless man hot spots play for high ground as well if you're looking for kills high ground on edge zone so you're comboing what i just said about w keyers on edge and you're taking high ground which is like just in instantly increases your odds of um getting kills and on top of that if you're on high ground, you have a great view of this, the next zones coming in and you know where a dead side is. You know so much more information, which allows you to make a lot more plays. So hopefully you're getting a lot of information from this, man. I'm dropping so many gems right here. And keep it a box fight, man. Like I always said, keep the box fight because, again, going into those edge zones, you don't want to be cranking because everybody's going to see you cranking. And everybody, I don't know anybody that looks at someone cranking and doesn't think free kills. And then when you have three or four people doing that, it's not even a third party. It's just three or four. It's just a shit show. And the person who does come out of there comes out with a shit ton of kills. But it's usually the person who goes in there last and burns it all down. Shoots it with a flame bow. GG's to you. Okay, don't be doing that shit. We're going to move on to part three, the last part of the video, which will help you a shit ton, man. Okay, boys, if you're new here, I am going to have to ask you to hit that sub button, man. Please. And it's not for my numbers to go up. You know, boys, like numbers are important and shit like that. But what's more important is impact. And how much I can help you, not only in Fortnite, but with your mental, 
with confidence and that's what i'm trying to do out here man i'm trying to go way bigger than fortnite so please man allow me to help you by hitting that sub button put those post notes on if you want to and let me know down below in the comments if you subscribe man i'll get back to you hit you with a thumbs up you know i got you covered man so let's go into part three i don't want to take too much time promoting myself man but let's go let's give more information Okay, boys, time has come for me to talk about all those boys who want those placement points and just want to chill out, man. They don't want to fight. They don't want stress. Mainly, I'm, I have to say this, man, because I am that player sometimes too. It actually is down to confidence and your own mechanics. But the thing is, that's okay because you realize your mechanics aren't up to scratch. You realize everything else. Or maybe you just actually want to play, you know, passive. Maybe that's just your play style for arena, for tournaments. Maybe that's just how you play. I have nothing against the man. Play passive the whole early game. Play low risk. Get those placement points and slay out in the end game. I've nothing wrong with that, man. So that's why I want to help you boys out too. Because I understand that I am that player as much as I would like to be a W Keen absolute crackhead. But I'm not. Let's move on. Let's talk about boxing up in central zones. That's very, very key in not all the time, okay? But in mid game, you need to be boxing up in the center of zone. The reason being, like I said, it's the reverse psychology of me saying W Keers play end game or end game play edge zone. Okay, so if you've got your W keyers on the edge of zone and everybody else is going to edge of zone and fighting, if you're dead center, you don't have to move, you don't have to do anything. You're center and you're chill, you're vibing because you don't have to move. So if you're not moving, people aren't noticing. The more you move, the more people are going to see you. It's, it's very, you know, simple, man. If a tree stays in the same spot, it doesn't get noticed. If a tree grows very tall, it gets noticed because it sticks out. Same, same, same thing goes around, man. It's, it's an analogy. But moving on, boxing up central is key. Because you're avoiding those W keyers because they're playing on the edge. And then at that, you can rotate early from spot to spot. Because you're central, you have a greater chance of getting the good zones, if you get me. But you don't want to be boxing up on high ground. And not low ground either. Just a nice spot. The reason being is, like I said earlier, a high ground is a hot spot. And I've noticed that, that you know most players are copping on. And it's actually a very big shift in the meta that high ground... Like boxing up on high ground. I don't mean taking high ground and moving zones. I mean boxing up on high ground. In solos especially. I think it's okay for duos and trios for now. But a lot of players have copped on. And are becoming so much smarter that. They play high ground. And it's not just like. Oh if you play high ground. You can definitely make it to end game. And stuff like that. If you box up on height and get a few beams. It's not like that anymore man. High ground is actually a hot spot. Where a lot of people tend to go. Because they look up. That's a good spot. I can see the whole lobby. Let's go there. And even you know. That's just their average player. You have the semi-pros, the pros, they're all doing that shit too. So if you want to avoid people and get your placement points, that's not where you want to be. And opposite is when you're on ultimate low ground, boxed up in a little box, people are like, that is a free kill, man. That is a free kill. He's on low ground. We are above him. All we have to do is beam down and irritate him, spray him, do all this good shit, and you're dead. So it's obvious when you're on low ground and someone has direct high ground that they have an advantage. So you don't want to stick out like that. So you just want a nice spot. You'll know it when you see it, man. Trust me, just a nice spot. Okay? And then when you're boxing up, build up too high because people are actually less likely to fight you. Okay? I'm going to come out and say it's about 50% less likely to fight you because you're more intimidating. And especially when it's a stacker, people tend to box up on top of you. But people aren't going to box up on top of you if you're too high because that means you need to go tree high. And that's just stupid, man. Nobody's going to box up tree high, man. Who's going to do that? You know, no one's going to box up tree high. It's just ugly. Okay? That's my science behind it. I've noticed if I box up too high, nobody comes up and, you know, boxes up on top of me. Also, in duos, trios, very useful as well. Because if, you know, your boy gets knocked, you can just drop him down and hold. Simple. Get me? Very, very, uh, like, advanced. And even at that, you can drop down, go down to the bottom layer, move out the back, and you're way more secure. So there's different methods like that you can apply. And I have nothing else to say, man. So I'm going to run this outro real quick. Like I said, that video for my peace control will be there and the playlist for all my rotations will be here somewhere as well i don't really know where my face cam is you'll see them click on them make sure you are subscribed man i appreciate all you boys watching appreciate the growth appreciate the boys i do have a discord link down below not sure if the link is working right now man but the discord is where shit goes down man that's where we do all the stuff we're going to be doing streams soon so make sure you're in there for them and we're live every weekday from i'm going to say about 6 p.m to 9 p.m gmt I'm out here, man. Thank you so much for watching.